We can win this war. We can win this war? OK, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but it also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again. Full women always, always great. great. Right. Make women great again. But they're going to do a three-day seminar for women led by all men. <laughs> in mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman? Well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, not my yes, words. We do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza and say no to the toxic bullying feminist dogma. <laughs> Taught by men to make women great again. Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 Convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the Manosphere. It's run by all men, Surprise. which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing... And welcome back to the 22 Convention 2021 of Orlando, Florida, being held at our 15-year anniversary 21 Summit, also, of course, in Orlando, Florida. Next up, we have a returning speaker to the 22 Convention, first speaking last year at the inaugural 22. He's also pretty famous speaking at our men's events, uh, 21 Convention and the Patriarch Convention. His speeches last year, his first time there, they have over a million views in total, as well as combined from the uh, speeches last year at 22 Convention. In fact, his speeches from 22 Convention last year have the most views out of anyone so far, about a quarter million, which uh, coming out a few months ago is pretty good for us. Anyway, without further ado, please let me welcome back to the 22 Convention stage, the author of De-Evolution and Free Aging Lifestyle, Coach Greg Adams. Thank welcome back. Thank yes, sir. You, thank you. Thank you. Hello, ladies. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Good. This, this particular talk this year, I'll try to be a little more interactive and include you in a couple of things. So I want your feedback or at least your prediction on a couple of things here. But today's speech, we're going to talk about removing the protector, the protector. Now, let me give you a little bit of background on me so you know who I am. I go by Coach Greg Adams. That's what I go by on the Internet. But I've been going by that for many years. I'm a basketball coach, former basketball coach at the college level. Okay. I got out of that business and uh, started this business. I did a fitness business in between, but I've been always a coach. So I coach men, women, and ironically, I was a women's basketball coach. So I did that for like 15 years. So I've been comfortable being around women. Um, I traveled with women. I worked with women very closely. Oftentimes, I was the only male around. Airplanes, buses, hotels, trips, gyms, food, dining, all that stuff. I was the only man around. So I got to learn women, learn how to speak to them, learn how to coach them, motivate them, and all of that stuff. I say that to say, I don't hate women. I've been around them a lot. So I understand them. And I always tell guys, it's more often better to understand them than to love them, because you can't do both. You have to choose one or the other. If you choose love, well, then you'll not understand them, and then you'll have problems. If you choose understanding, then it is possible that you can build a helpful, respectful relationship with them, and then there's an understanding. Also, I might add, I have been married before. I'm no longer married. I also have children, too. They're teenagers, 16 and 14. One's a woman, one's a young woman, a young adult starting the date. One's a young man, the youngest is the young man, and he doesn't date. 
He probably listens to my show sometimes. That's probably why he doesn't date. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> he's been telling me he wants to go his own way for a long time. All right, so that was a little introduction on me, just so you know who I am. And uh, from time to time, I'll go back to my notes on this stuff. So let's talk about this. The protector. We live in some incredible times of comfort. Would you say we are comfortable here in the United States up until January 2020? Right now, then it was all the discomfort. We couldn't enjoy life. We couldn't leave well enough alone. We had to bother the comfort level. But we live in air conditioning buildings here and all this humidity. Everything's fine. No one's going to attack you today. No one's going to what we call grape you at any moment. No one's going to jump outside the bushes. We have protectors everywhere. Now, what incredible times of comfort oftentimes brings people that are not content. You know, all of a sudden they're like, we got to start changing stuff. What do we need to change? Well, there's stuff that needs to be changed all the time. And people start getting disruptive. And now what we're doing right now, okay, we're creating problems where there's probably not many problems. Of course, there's nothing perfect. But we start creating issues and division in little boxes where we're competing against each other. We're our own worst enemy. Men versus the women, black versus the white, Republicans versus the Democrats, liberals versus the conservatives. All right, you name it, there's a division there. The LBGTQRSTUP, WXYNZ. I can't even keep track the trans versus the gays. I was listening to the radio going to the mall yesterday in Orlando. The minority LBGTA or whatever they are, were going against the white LBG. I couldn't even. I said, I'm done. <laughs> I can't help. This is just too much comfort. This is getting ridiculous. But this is where we are. The reason why I bring this up is because, of course, if you think about it, I said that I was a father. I want to interact with the audience now. How many of you were raised by your father? Wow, do you see that? We only had one hand go up. Like, was the father around, your mother and father? How many had a mother and father? Okay, a couple of hands went up here. We had some hands in the back. All right, so we're looking at it as, I would say more than half of the room did not have a male figure in their lives. Interesting. Now, this is a phenomenon that has taken over the divorce culture. We have a lot of split families, family versus family. We have the split custody situation. We have the idea of co-parenting where one kid lives in a suitcase and the parents live in a house. They go back and forth. All right. And backpacks all day, all day, their whole entire lives. Is that fair? That's not a fair way to live, but we have somehow imagined this could be okay for them. So while they're with the mother, they have a whole set of rules. And when with the father, they have a different set of rules. If the father does get granted custody, well, sometimes they don't and there's no protector. Now, what do we do? Next question to the audience. What would the role be? What would you consider the role of a man to be? All right. Anyone, you can raise your hand. I can call you out. What would you consider the role of a man to be? What is his duties to society? What are his duties to his women? What are his duties to his children? Anyone? Putting up guardrails for them. Putting up guardrails for them. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Provide provision. Anyone else? Security. Security. All right. We already got we got putting up the, the rails, protecting security, provision. Anyone else? Discipline. Discipline, order. When there's time of chaos like we have today. Those are all good ones. I love those. I love those. We got protection, provision, security and discipline. Remember the amount of hands that didn't have fathers. You might have missed that. And it was replaced by someone else. I'm going to get there. Hold on for a second. What would you say the roles and duties of a woman would be? 
to to society, men and or their children. What would the w- duties of women be? To nurture. To nurture. Okay. To nourish. To nourish. That's good. You were going to say nurture. Anyone else? Comfort. Comfort. All right. Boy, those are all protective models. Okay. Support their partner so the man gets something now. He got something. All right. The man. Training the young. Boy, you guys, are, these are all great answers, by the way. Training the young. Okay. Those are all good. We'll go with those. Okay. Because sometimes when you ask what the role of women are today, there's an offense of everybody's on the attack now. What do you mean? But she had no problem giving the roles of men. It's interesting, right? So now we got a lot of protection going on with the protecting the children, right? We're protecting the children. We got the nurturing and the caring. And somehow we've made it and a good idea to once the kid is born, release them to strangers from day one all the way up until day year 18. Are we protecting the children? Are we nurturing? Are we comforting? We actually disappear and we go to our owners. We're going to talk about that in a second. Here is what we're talking about here. I talked about this last year here, the fatherless, the father absence crisis in America. This says one in four live without a father in the home. This is more like two out of four, three out of four. It's getting ridiculous now. You can't even measure it now. All you can see is the results of it. All you can see is the results of it. When you include the mother outside of the home away, not nurturing, comforting, protecting, then this number is three out of four. Okay, we have a problem with the parent situation in our country. And again, we have an idea that we can just turn our kids over to stranger and they'll be better kids. Okay, we're going to talk about free education in a minute. A threat to the system. This is one of my favorite memes right here. (laughs) You men are a threat to the system, the patriarchy, right? Now, it's getting harder and harder to protect. If I want to be married, have a kid, have a family. I have roles, she has roles. People don't have a problem telling me what my role is. I tell her what her role is. She's like, no, I don't gotta do all that, okay? It's getting harder and harder for men to protect. And the only way we can protect is when they tell us, this is where we want you. You protect over here, but we can do it ourselves. We're gonna talk about marketing campaigns that you've all been indoctrinated with, okay? But the greatest threat for our young uh, children, for our daughters and our sons that we're trying to build up to be greater generations than us, right? Right now, you mismanage them. They go on to TikTok. Believe it or not, this is where they get their news. I know you guys don't understand this. We're a little bit of older audience here. But young people, Generation Z, get all of their information pretty much on TikTok and YouTube. That is their news source. They don't read newspapers, baby boomers. They don't even look at the news. They don't even barely look at television anymore. It's right here in their palm of their hand. And the young ladies, they get to put out all of their good little growing bodies out here on the internet for all to see. And they can get money from this. They can market themselves. They can get social status. Their social status can be above all the little boys at their school to where the boys look up at the girls like she's a celebrity. She has 10,000 followers. I don't know if you know older people in the room. This is all of us, by the way. I don't know if you know, but that's called social currency. This is how they measure each other. They measure each other on their followings. They measure each other on their Snapchat score. Oh, his Snapchat score is not that much. This is how they measure the next mate. Now for men, they don't have big followings. But this is how the unmonitored are raising themselves. The bright idea of I have a career, you have a career, push the kids to the strangers. And now this is how the young girls grow up. So much so that the boys are looking at this like, well, we got to do that too, right? Much easier being a woman or mimicking femininity because it gets all the attention. So you're telling your son, get some skill. How many boys have skill? 
like a skill that they can use to survive. Not many. They can't do a damn thing. They might be able to do something technology wise, but if the lights went out, they would have no skill. And so the young boys are going, well, I see he became a woman. Not only did he become a woman, he became the woman of the year. Now that should be offensive to you guys. You've been women this long and y'all asses <laughs> couldn't even pull that off. Less than a year a woman, the woman of the year. So this is where we are. And when they go to their school, they're told this is okay. I mean, listen, I was in a generation where we were really fighting some real racism. I know they've been saying there's some racism going on. Um, that's all yes. We had a little bit of realer situations going on. So this was the integration of the, the races. We became a little bit of a melting pot. Okay, now this is their melting pot stuff right here where they're saying we need to integrate these people in, accept them, et cetera, et cetera. I have no problem with that, except that it's taught to kids way too young. The kids, ironically, you turned over to go to your job. This is who's telling you all of this stuff. And so when your boy says, hell with being a cowboy, I'm gonna be a woman. They go from nurturer, they go from provider secure to the nurturer and the comforter. Okay, these are the roles that you assign. All right, this is a guy right here. I believe his name is Jeffrey Younger. I'm bad with names. He's in a custody battle with his wife. He married her. She's a psychologist or something like that. He married her and they produced this child, this young boy. Well, in the custody battle, the mom says, the young boy's a girl. He wants to be a girl. I think the boy is five. Well, the father said, no, nah, we're not gonna do any of that. He did what? Provided securities, you know, all that stuff, protected. So when the boy goes to the father, it's a boy. When he goes to the mother, it's a girl. And so then they play this back and forth and the mom wants to do injections and change the hormone of the young boy. And so they're in court nonstop for this. This is what happens when you remove the protector. This is what happens when you remove the protector, you create chaos. And we're in chaotic times and the children are left to their own or left to their own nerves. This is the next question, ladies. There was a time where women were considered property. Who were they considered property to? Their husbands. Anyone else? Their fathers. Their fathers. That's going to be it. Husbands and fathers. They would go from the father to the husband. For centuries, we ran it like this. And the reason why was because, in my opinion, in that time, there was nothing for women to do much outside of the house, right? People were surviving. It was very agrarian, agricultural, heavy lifting. Then you went to the Industrial Revolution. You know what I mean? This is a lot of you know, people in bad work conditions, no work protection laws and all of that stuff. You can get children in there, women working 800 hours a week okay? in bad conditions. But... For the most part, there were no computers, typewriters, and all of this stuff that you could just now fire off an email, right? Now we've gone into a culture where women can do these things and they can work outside the home a lot more than they could before. So there's really no need for the father to pass that daughter on to a man because the woman can do it on her own now, you think. So now, now that there's no more property, I'm gonna ask you a question. Women are no longer property. Well, are women free? Are women today free? You have these women here saying, we don't deserve this. I don't know what they're talking about, but it's something else that they want. They want it from someone. Can we tell who they want it from? Who are they trying to free themselves from? And if they are not trying to free themselves, they must be free. What is the question here? Are women free? I'm gonna ask that to you audience, to the audience. Are women free? They're not free, you gotta pay for them in a lot of places, we'll talk about that later. But <laughs> we'll talk about your daughters and your granddaughters later. Are women free? 
who owns women? Because we said fathers and husbands owned them, but they're no longer property. Does anyone else own them? Or are they free? Are you free? Do you feel free? Yes. You feel free? Yes. Okay, good. You're not free? <laughs> All right. Are you free? You're free? You feel free? I choose to. You have a husband? And you have a, okay, good. Your husband owns you? Yeah. You allow him. I allow him. Okay, but how did you allow him? Well, I gave him that role because I feel like you gave it to him. Okay, but if you didn't allow or give it to him, what would happen? Um, who would own you? Who would who would you report to? My father. Probably. Your father. Okay, good. Anyone else? Are you free? Yes. Self ownership, you own yourself. So you protect yourself? You Well, I must say when I was self owning myself, I always felt very vulnerable and unprotected. Okay. And I used to get upset with my dad because when he was around me, he was always giving me advice and trying to be protective and I'm like, Well, what the hell do you think I'm doing when you're not around? You got know, it totally on my own. And I, I kinda resented him trying to intrude on That's that. normal, yes. But Anyway. Sorry for the audience on the camera. You can't pick up any of this, but we'll we'll repeat some of the things that they're saying. You feel free or you have the. Yeah, I do. But I think a lot of women have become enslaved to their bosses. Oh, we're going to get there. All right. Anyone else? OK, I'm glad you brought that point up. She says a lot of women feel enslaved to their bosses. The previous woman was talking about the father in the protection mode was trying to protect her. And in rebellion mode, like teenagers or young people will do to their parents, they're, you're like, hey, I don't need this. I can do it on my own, right? Okay. All right, so great. I, I appreciate the interaction. Check this out. This right here is the good old government. We'll do the mic next time. Thank you. Okay. This is the government. This is not our government, but it's close to it. We're getting closer. Um, the government owns women. That's who owns women. That's one of your owners. See, when they made the law that says no man will ever own you again, they transferred that ownership right to them. And now they own you. So much so that I no longer have to go to your father, get down on my knee and say, can I take your daughter's hand in marriage? I no longer have to do that. But I do have to go to the government to ask them. And they give me a permit. Here's your license to marry this woman. They just transferred the ownership Back from them, back to me, temporarily. Although if she gets upset with me, she could go right back to the government and turn me back in for cash and prices. So in essence, the government owns you. You're not free. Men aren't free for the most part. We have an illusion of freedom, but men understand that because we understand hierarchy. We accept hierarchy. We don't deal with like equality and all that stuff. Amongst men, it's already established when we walk in the room who's the dominant and who's not. And we accept it. As soon as we walk in, I'm not a big guy. I can see this guy over here. I'll be like, he could take me. So in essence, I no longer can go, man, I'm equal to you. I got to prove it. And I know I got to prove it because he can push the teeth back in my throat and it'll be over real quick. It'll be established real quick who's the dominant and who's the submissive or who's the lesser than. We understand that by nature. We always have to prove equality. We have to prove the dominance. Women don't. Oh, I'm equal to you. In what way? You have equal rights, but you don't have equal outcome. But you're being told there should be equal outcome, pay gap and all of this stuff. This is all pushed by the government. And then they motivate you to try to get all of these things. And then you look like these women, right? We deserve, we don't deserve this. Are you kidding me? Really? Deserve? What do I deserve in this life? I just deserve an opportunity. That's it. But I don't deserve to be pro propped up and pushed up. It does help. But sometimes the government will continue to campaign for you to have this, create a little bit more division, make you angry, okay? And make you believe that you're free. But 
You're not. Anybody know what that's called? University. That's a university. I call it the public school indoctrination camp. Okay. Um, what they do is they tell you from one period of teenage years all the way up into young adulthood, they tell you everything messed up about you. You don't have this and you don't have that and the man and the white man and then the patriarchy. That's what they spend more time on. They used to teach you arithmetic and engineering and all of that stuff. But the first two and a half years of your education is called general studies. And they teach you some general bullshit that you learn in high school. And then in the meantime, the professors, the Marxist professors, they teach you how to protest. So then you look like these people right there on the college campus. So instead of women going, damn, I'd like to start a family, perhaps meet a man here. No, no, no. <clears throat> We're going to be activists because our owners tell us to. How do I know colleges own women? Well, 70% of the college debt is owned by women. Did you have a choice to go to college? Probably not. You had to go to college. You went to your baby boomer parents. I'm going to get married. I'm gonna leave high school and get married, find my man, we're gonna have kids. What did they probably say to you? Not until you get your college education. <laughs> they were like, you're not gonna go to college? You're not gonna get a degree? Don't you wanna be strong and independent? Probably people talked you out of that situation. Is that free? Would you say that would be freedom of choice? Most women are automatically talked out of doing exactly that. Oh no, you're too young. There's no way you're ready to have children and be, have a family. There's no way you're ready to be married. And in this situation here, they say, why don't you go to college? In essence, you're gonna strap yourself along with student loan debt that you're gonna carry for 10 years, 20, 30. I know women in their 50s and 60s that still hold college debt. Now, if you own debt to someone, are you free of that person? You're not. They own you. And they're going to continue to own you by continuing to giving you these marketing campaigns. Uh, what is this woman doing? Anyone? Multitasking. She's multitasking. She's working. She's focusing on her career, as we say on my show. She has a job. And she's actually paying attention quite dutifully to the job. The kid is secondary to that job. That kid is off doing something else right now. She's gonna be on TikTok in about two years, shaking her ass, okay? And her mom's not gonna know because the mom, they're gonna have all these sheltered accounts. The kids are gonna have all these math. Here's my TikTok account, mom. And they're gonna have all these ass shaking accounts later. Um, she's working for someone that owns a business. And when they own the business, they own the employees. Women are told to do what? Go get a career, go get a job, advance, get in the business, work in it, all of this stuff, right? This is new. This is not something that has been around for a long time. And when you normally have a career, you're working outside the home and you push the kids off to the strangers. Here's the daycare. They qualified these people. Don't worry, they'll raise your kids. Uh, this public school, uh, elementary school, 93% of the teachers are women. Go in there. Trust us, we made the right choice. And then so on for sort. You don't even know your damn teacher's name. You don't even know where they live. But this person is working. She's owned by the corporation. There's many women that are so loyal to the corporation that they probably would get a tattoo of the corporation's logo on their ass tomorrow. Okay? before they would get their husband's name. I would not take my husband's name because I work a career and I built my name with this in this career. So I can't take your name, but I'll take the corporation's logo tattooed on me. Women be shopping. Women be shopping. They be shopping so much that they control 83% of the spending in our country. 83%. 83%. And you know what? The corporations are going, this ain't good enough. We need more spending from women. So they gave y'all stimmy checks so y'all can go shopping. They didn't give it to men because men just invested it in Bitcoin. And they bought porn and video games. That didn't help. They were like, nah, 
these women need to be shopping. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Coach, Christian Louboutin, like my shoes, you know, red bottom, you know. <laughs> women be shopping. And so in essence, if the, car can't, if the corporations know women be shopping, they're continuing to do what? Market to you all day long. You need this, you need that, you need this hand cream, you need this face cream, this makeup palette, all of these things. Now, I say that to say, oh, I'm gonna give you another demonstration of this because people are like, nah, not so much. Okay, this corporation, Goldman Sachs, made a, launched a pledge to one million black women, a new initiative committing $10 billion in investment capital and 100 million in philanthropic support to advance racial equality and economic opportunities by investing in who? Black women. You're gonna solve the racial problem by only giving money to black women. Not black men, not black families, black women. What do you think that would do? That's the new bomb to the community, by the way. What do you think that would make the black women do? Link up with the man or link up with their owner? Do you think it would link up with the owner? They would be eternally committed to these people for 200 years. Just like they did, just like LBJ said. LBJ said this. When we put the Civil Rights Acts of 1964 out, we'll have these N-I-G-G-E-R's voting Democrat for the next 200 years. This is part two. Look at the black family. 60% of the black family, unpaired. I'm not, not the black family. 60% of black women, no partner. No partner compared to 33% of white women. Okay, not only that, seven, I'm sorry, 80% of black children grow up in a single parent household, primarily single mother. And we see things like this, oh yeah, let's help the women via the corporation, via their owner, and then they will be eternally loyal to them. It's the division. So when I ask this in the middle, in, uh, right here, are women free? Absolutely not. They went from father and husband to government, public school indoctrination camp, corporation, and shopping. All right, this is where their loyalty lies. Now, this isn't negative, it's just the reality of the situation. Remove yourself from either one of these four places and you will find yourself unprotected. You will find your protection model gone. You won't have a paycheck. You won't have a house. You won't have money to go shopping. You definitely won't have any student loan debt, but you will be able to work at Rite Aid, CVS. You'd be bagging groceries. And then they'd be working at 11 o'clock at night and you gotta go walk out into that car in the middle of the night with no man protecting you. All of a sudden, your protection model goes away. If the government all of a sudden says, shoop, we ain't protecting women no more. Don't come to us with your man bullshit no more. Hey, no domestic violence stuff. Hey, protect yourself. If the government said, do not come to my courthouse with this bullshit, what would happen? You probably would be unprotected overnight. If they said, work that shit out with your husband. Don't divorce him here. Take care of that yourself. You decide to do that. What would happen to women's protection? Gone. So I say that to say the ownership has been transferred from husband to father to government, school, corporations, and work. And these are the things primarily that you hear women bragging about the most. I got me a job. Okay, what does that have to do with me? I got a degree, I'm smart. That don't make you smart, but you have a degree, okay? You probably have student loan debt too, which I don't want no parts of. And they'll talk about their handbags and all these things, okay? This is where the ownership lies. Uh, removing the protector, we're back here. Next point. If men wanted to protect women, they were like, you know what? We want women, I love women. I wanna protect you. They'll have to be allowed that opportunity. They have to be given that opportunity. That woman would have to say, I'll give that to you. And the government's guns will be pointed at your ass, but I'll give that to you. And so men are still wanting to protect and provide. 
The generation beyond us, millennial, Generation Z, not so much. You're going to get none of that. Your granddaughters, your daughters, they're going to get none of that. The boys want none of this because all their lives they've been told the women can do just as good as you. Now, fifth grade boy is looking at himself in the PE class and looking at her ass like, wait a minute. I'm faster, bigger, stronger. I probably get as good as grades. And if you look at the SAT, SAT scores and all of these scores that are racially and generally biased, the men, the boys perform better. They're better. Math, science, the boys are better. Now, behavioral wise, they're not, <laughs> okay? Because women are, they, they wanna please. There's also a fear mechanism with women. I don't want this person to hate me, so I'm gonna cooperate. Boys don't have that. Boys are like, I can beat your ass <laughs> to the teacher. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to listen to you. And nor do I want to. I just don't want to run out here. All right. I want to go run outside. So this is what's happening here. So the protectors are now not the fathers anymore. We can't even protect our children. We're not even in our children's lives. Many times the courts don't allow us or the woman takes the kid and we can't even be a part of the kid's life. So now we can't protect them. No longer can we protect you. And the more politically involved you get, the least protection men are able to give to women. This is how it kind of works. This is just, you know, a gloss over of the political side. I don't want to get too political. But 100 years ago, women could barely vote. So the voting statistic was 100 percent men, 0 percent women. Now, 100 years now, it is 60 percent women, 40 percent men. This is how the voting percentages works out. So women have the overwhelming um, input in how things are voted. So you want to take away my guns? I got to depend on the women going to the poll and go, nah, let my husband keep his guns. Do they do that? Most times, the women, especially in California, I live in California, the women be going in there like, we don't need no guns. Yeah, the liberals, yes. And I'm going, hold up. I need, I need to protect you. I need to protect my family. Who's going to protect? Who's going to protect us from the government? Well, she's like, shit, the government's doing fine by us. And plus that politician, he's handsome, so I voted for him. <sighs> and I trust him. He's a good looking guy. He would never cheat on his wife, right? All this bullshit. And you're going, oh, my God. And so now he gets voted in and they get rid of the guns. They get rid of my protection. He gets voted in and he gives you more stuff. He gets voted in and he lets you know I'm good with the women's right. And now the protector is no longer me. It is now the government. Where do men fall in? What do we do? Let's get to some of this stuff here. Let's get to some of this stuff. And when I say this stuff, there's removing the protector, especially in the black family. I mean, the fathers are, it's not that the fathers don't want to be there. There's, that's what you're told. It's that the father's life is made difficult to want to be there. So he wants to be there, but he's like, I don't want to put up with her anymore. And then the woman says, well, if you don't want to put up with her, with me, you can't see your kid type of deal. And then, you know, the custody exchanges get a little bit more. And he's like, all right, just stay with her. Okay, so you remove the father. Um, let's see, I have a point on this one. There's also this one. This is, I heard this recently. I can't remember where I heard it. I guess there was a couple, a married couple. And I guess they were gonna split up. And uh, the mother had a career, the father had a career. And they were like, what are we gonna do with the kid? The kid's still preschool age. Well, the mother's custody agreement, she thought it would be genius if the father stayed home to raise the kid meaning he doesn't work while she goes to her career. And I'm going, why would he do that? I mean, he's probably gonna work longer than her, more years. He's probably gonna earn more than her. That's not disputed. And the more he invests in his career, he's gonna earn, his, his potential and growth is much better than hers. Why would he stop? Well, the prevailing thought is, why would she stop? Because then, our culture, we're told she can just have a successful career too, which many do. 
Most don't. You have a series of jobs. You know what I mean? You don't have no career. A series of jobs. By 40, you're doing temp jobs. You know what I mean? You're just hanging on. You know, by 50, you're like, I need to find a husband. You know what I mean? Like, I need to get a man around this damn thing. <laughs> Retirement plan time. I'm tired of this stuff. Then 60 Walmart greeter. You know, it's all off the rails then. <laughs> but, wow, that's now, well, don't mean to insult. Sometimes there's humor in the insult. <laughs> but there's also truth in the humor. But here's the deal. Here's the deal, because if it wasn't true, we wouldn't hear anything about a gender pay gap, would we? If women were making as much as men, we wouldn't hear anything, but every day, 77 cents on a dollar. All right, uh, listen, here's, here's what we're gonna talk about here. We just removed the man from the house, I mean, from the job to take care of his kid. Now we got the removal of the parent, we have the divorce culture, and we also have this, we have the silence of the protector. That's insulting. You shouldn't say that. You can't say that. Well, first of all, I'm self-employed. The only people standing between my freedom and me is the government. I support myself. I make my own money. I have my own thing. The only people that can stop me right now is the government. That's, that, that's the only people. I don't have a boss to report to, nobody. I don't have a wife to report to, nothing. The only people that can stop me is government enforcers. That's it. So I am a protector who's been told I can't say nothing. How dare you silence you? You can't say that, but I'm a protector. What was I earlier? Remember the man question? Remember that? Put the gates up, protect, secure, provide, but don't say nothing. You can't say nothing. You can't have an opinion. You can't fight the agenda. We're gonna cancel you. Well, I can say whatever the hell I want. And I can also take the accountability and responsibility of saying said things. So I'm gonna say this nicely. I don't wanna have sex with anyone in this room, including the men. And the reason why I don't, <laughs> I won't give you the reason, but the point of it all is I can tell you the truth because I have no motive. Now, men that do want to sleep with you, they will lie to your ass and they're going to lie and they're going to stay quiet and they're going to try to please you. Well, I don't have that motive. So I tend to lean over on saying what the hell I want to say. And that's offensive to people. But I'm the protector. But I'm the provider. I'm the secure. See, if you want a protector, they should be able to do whatever the hell they want to an extent. But you can't silence the guy. And too many of our men are henpecked, weak, beta, whatever phrase you would throw out there. Now, I'm going to ask you to the ladies over here that said, I, you said in essence you submit, but it wasn't the word submit. You, you have your husband as a protector. Do you like men who are silent, liars, weak, beta? Do you like those men? Are those the men you're gonna give or allow to lead you? No. no. What? I actually started You divorced one before, right? And so as men, as a man and a leader and a, and a guy that is vocal, I tell men all the time, do not fall for this. You will get no women. <laughs> you ain't gonna get none. They gonna look at you and divorce you. Oh, hell no. I, nope, I like a man that is strong. I like a man that will lead. Well, why would you tell him to stop telling, saying things? To an extent, I get it. Some things are really, really offensive. And if you're offended by what men are saying today, uh, grow up in the 50s. Men were barbarians compared to what they are today. They used to say some stuff that will make your hair curl up right now. Okay? Some old school ass men. All right? So you, you think of what I'm saying is offensive. Shit. <laughs> The, your great grandfather would have you in a corner in fetal position. Now, we silence the men and we shame them. Oh my gosh, shame on this guy. He's a millionaire. He feeds families. He supports families. He supports families. He protects families. He secures families. Not just his family, everybody that he employs. His whole damn corporation. And what do we do to the guy? Bring him down. 
for saying something that is true or near true, funny, entertaining, all the things that we want, but we live in incredible times of comfort. And when you're comfortable, you complain about bullshit. <laughs> and so we take a guy that is a protector and we shame him. We cancel him. We take away his ability to earn and we're happy. Ha! He lost his money on a false allegation, but it was false. Well, that's just how it goes. We silence, shame, and cancel the protectors. We change the language of the protector. Uh, this is where we interact now. I have a session on my coaching program or my YouTube show called subservient language. You're gonna help me out here. This is where you come in. You're gonna fill in the blank. Um, happy wife. Happy wife, happy life. Oh man, no, one, no matter what she does to you, just don't make her not happy with you. Now that is the most subservient language that I've ever heard. What male protector would go for that? A beta? No, I mean, not a, a real male protector ain't going for that. A beta will say, okay, despite the fact that I'm getting the short end of the stick here, I'm gonna make her happy and that's the priority. That is some sort of, okay, let's flip it. Happy husband, have you ever heard it? Nobody cares about the damn husband and his emotions. Just get over it. Happy wife, happy life. I think that is very offensive, but we can't cancel it because people will say, yeah, 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 yeah. She wears the pants. She wears the pants. People will applaud that. Oh, good for her, yes. She wears the pants in family. She's got him in line. He can't do anything without her permission. I have to ask my wife for permission. I got to ask her. So she wears the pants in the family, but he's the protector. He's the, he's the guy securing, he's providing. Remember we, we said that earlier. We all agree that that's what men's roles are, but she's gonna wear the pants. Okay, she's killing the spiders. She's doing the plumbing. She's screwing in the light bulbs. When the burglar comes in, she's gonna grab the bat. She's gonna load the gun. Now there's some women that could do that, but most aren't going to do that. So how does she wear the pants? And why do we promote that? Aren't we an equal society? Aren't we about equality? Why should she wear the pants? Well, she has a henpecked husband and we promote henpecked husbands. I was watching a, up in the hotel, they had a show called Something About Raymond. I've never seen it before. And they have a character who's a tall guy. Can't remember his name. He's a comedian and he has a wife. Well, the wife's role on the show is to, to scowl at him when he steps out of line. The whole show. I watched like three episodes. All right. Now she's like this and he's a giant. And he's, yes dear. The whole time. And I'm like, ah, I know where we got it from. See, it's promoted that he gets a reward, maybe some sex from his wife or something like that, if, she, if he behaves. So he better be a good boy. Uh, let's go for another one here. Most men are weak and beta. How do you get past this? How do you be a real man? How do you be a husband and a father? That has been where we've dropped the ball as men is because we're too acceptant. We're too tolerant. I'm calling for intolerance for evil. We need to be able to properly identify with the definition, what is masculinity? We need men to stand up and do heroic things. Building a, a tribe of people who are of like mind, who you can depend on, who will hold you accountable, who will call you on your BS. I call the official tagline for now with 21 Connection is America's last stand for masculinity. Mm -hmm. I think it is. The event, and it's as a reflection of the manosphere, really. You come out and you consciously attend and start talking with these people because people who are coming here are coming here to discuss big ideas, important ideas. Not just talking about being masculine, but okay, you've done all this self-development, what are you gonna do with it? How about cheaper 
it's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. No matter how bad the relationship is, a man knows, shit, I better just go ahead and keep her or I'm gonna lose my pants. I'm gonna lose my house, my car, all my provision. I'm gonna lose my children. I'm gonna lose this. In our culture, we promote cheaper to keep her, not healthy relationships, not let the wife get in order, not have her do all of this. Hey, hon, can you make some toast? Can you make some toast for me? I ain't making no damn toast. I gotta go to work. The wife leaves the house before the husband. She gets up, she does her hair. She goes through the whole thing, gets her clothes on. She dresses up better for the boss, her owner, than she does for her husband. The husband don't get none of that. She don't rush home. I'm gonna look good for my husband, no. So he's not happy. No happy husband, happy life. He's like, oh, I gotta put up with this shit. <laughs> She's scolding him because she knows he can't hit her. He loses everything. He can't scold her back because it's emotional or verbal abuse. So he gotta put up with it. And it's cheaper to go hand and keep them. Cause I messed up and asked the government, her owner for her hand in marriage, not her father. Okay, but this is what's happening in our culture. And when I say it, I'm the asshole, as if I made the, 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 the situation up. Did I make any of this stuff? Did I start this? I didn't start this. I'm basically calling it out though, but you can't say that. And I also hate women, apparently, by saying these things. I don't know. My daughter don't think I hate her though. And that's the only one that matters. Let's talk about this one. How about this one? I guess I'll have to sleep on the, the couch. He got to go sleep on the couch. I was watching the movie called Coming to America 2. Prince Akeem, he is now the king. He gets in an argument with his wife, who is now the queen, I would assume. And the royal guard is outside. They're catching an the argument. The queen sent the king to go sleep on the couch. Now. I know fairy tales and romance and all those things, but that doesn't seem about right. That seems out of order. But in our culture, we will do things like this and they do it in what we call a drip campaign. They give you a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until it's normal. Now, if I just came out, I was like, all right, all men will always sleep on the couch when there's a disagreement. End of story, everybody would be like, hey, hold up for a second. But if they do a little bit here, here's the 30 second commercial of this bullshit. Here's a little bit of an introduction of a sitcom with this. And they do this year after year, day after day. It becomes our reality. We accept it. Just like you guys accept it to wear face condoms on and distance yourself. Like it didn't happen. Like we had to get used to it. They just came on TV, they put some celebrities on the TV and they were like, you know, it'd be better if you stay six feet away from each other and put a face condom on. Some people were like, hell no, we ain't doing that until you had to go outside, right? You had to go to the store and go get something. You walked in, fuck that bullshit, right? And then they were like, well, you won't get served until you put your face condom on and stand apart. All right, damn. <sighs> a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time until it becomes normal. You forget your, you ever forget your mask? You'd be like, damn. you like, I gotta go all the way back home for a stocking to put on your face. I'm like, I ain't going home for that. They're gonna have to just deal with me. But I can do that, because I only the only people that can stop me is the government. Nobody else. So there better be somebody there with a gun when I get there to stop me from going into that store. All right, if there's not, I'm gonna get what the hell I want. All right, uh, what about this one? I'm in the dog house. I'm in the dog house. Damn, I pissed my wife off. She knew I bought that new AR-15. She said no guns in the house. She found it in my closet. Now, I'm in the dog house. Like, does these, do these relationships make, do these things make men want to get in relationships? Does, it, does this right here, we wonder why there's a relationship issue and some of you guys came here for relationship stuff. We wonder why there's a problem. We, why aren't men going to commit? Well, it sounds like, it's not a fair fight for him. It sounds horrible. Even the married men make it sound horrible. Well, happy wife, happy life, <laughs> right? Hell no. 
No, I'm not doing this. Well, you're bitter. No, it sounds miserable. And we see the divorce rate skyrocketing. We see marriage rates plummeting. We also see childbirth rates going into the toilet. I mean, it's just the birth. We don't even have enough people to replace the people who are dying now. We're under replacement levels. Okay. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. We're under replacement levels in the birth rate. Okay. Um, we used to have phrases, king of the castle, father's knows best. Even Papa Rose Rolling Stone, all right. But those phrases are gone. I'm the king of this castle. That's a joke, right? Right? That would be a joke if your husband says some shit like that. Or if you went to your job and you said, my husband is the king of my castle. They'd be like, girl, are you crazy? You need to see an abuse counselor. <laughs> They'd take your ass into the abuse counselor. But if I say happy wife, happy life, nobody would say any anything. But these are what we're talking about. You remove the protector and you say the woman is by virtue the protector. She wears the pants. But if the burglar, the government, the job also to, uh, stripped her check, if the government came marching through that door, guess what will happen? If a burglar came marching through that, if a spider, a bee, a mosquito, <laughs> it wouldn't take much for women to be like, oh, shit. Uh, honey, go ahead and step up. It would be a, it would be an instant transfer of ownership back to that husband immediately. This is what we have to understand. If men today, God forbid this ever happens, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see this. And I'm not suggesting this to the audience. If men today said, fuck this bullshit, it would be a nightmare scenario for women. Immediately. You wouldn't want this to happen. But it wouldn't be good for you. Have we seen this recently in history? Where? Afghanistan. The Taliban said, fuck this bullshit. And what happened? The women's rights over there. Did that matter anymore? Did all the protesting matter? Nothing mattered. They said, we bringing it back. I don't care what you say. You say something, they was turning your light system out on the street. So I say that to say men are and will always be the protectors. Unfortunately, we train them to be simps and betas. And then those men don't get rewarded with any women. What's most likely going to happen is that those men will say, fuck that bullshit. Not the men who protect you. It is the men who are not getting the rewards, but are told to be getting the rewards. And I wouldn't want that to happen. But we do see those events happen, like a school shooter or something like that. What do they say? Well, he was an incel, he was a virgin, and he had relationship problems. If those men actually said, we're kind of gonna put up with this BS, it could be a nightmare scenario. And immediately every woman would run to the shelter of men. If the lights went out today, the government turned the lights out. Men would be nominated to be the protector. If there was a flood that came in here in this room right now, all of you guys will jump in the boat and we'll be outside of the boat. If I jump my ass in that boat, all of y'all will look at me like this. The hell are you doing in here? <laughs> I don't wanna die. No, 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 no. Jump your ass out. There's a lady that needs some room. You see what I mean? It wouldn't take much for the men will be, to be protectors overnight, but we tell men to stop doing this, stop doing this, give up this, do this, be fair for this, that, that. There could be a problem on the horizon if we continue that. And that problem is called the barbarian. I call it the barbarian at the gate. We're already seeing a form of a barbarian today. It's called COVID-19. It didn't take much. Couple people got the sniffles, couple people died. Couple people got in a motorcycle wreck and died and said they died of COVID. It was a nightmare. There's, it's still going on. And it's gonna keep going on because you guys keep cooperating. Who's running COVID-19? Anybody know? Yeah, and he is what part of the who? The government. Your owner. You're listening to politicians who used to kiss babies to get you to vote for them. They used to have the glad hand. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Hi, hi. 
That's how they used to treat your ass less than three years ago. Now they say, you know what? Stay your ass at home. Don't bring your ass up. Put that face condom on. Stay six feet away. And you guys do it. The governor of New York will do it. We'll poke this in your system. You know what? It'll never end. I'm going to tell you it'll never end because men are weak. Only the only hope you have is strong men. Men that says, I don't give a shit about your feelings. I'm going to do it. That's the only way it ends because they'll keep doing shit. They're just going to keep pushing more stuff on you. It's never going to end because we comply. 60% of the voters are women. The beta male husband that doesn't want to piss off his wife will get a shot in his arm. She wants me to get this shot. Did you want to get the shot? I didn't really want to get it, but my boss said I'll lose my job. These are men. Why don't you go make your own job? Ah, oh, well, these are your protectors and it's going to get worse in the future. It's, it's, we're not going to a good place. This is the barbarian at the gate. When the barbarian shows up, there's no more negotiation. He don't speak your language. He don't care about your racial history of oppression. He don't care about your gender history of oppression. He don't care about divorce. He don't care about marriage. He don't care about anything. You don't know what he cares about. You're going to find out when he starts swinging the ax, though. And if you actually live through whatever he's going through, you'll find out what the rules are when he tells you it. <sighs> OK. See, the barbarian is always on the horizon. And the more we weaken the men, the more likely there's no one to protect you from the barbarian. We already just made it clear if a flood, a mosquito, a bee came in here, you would immediately shift to the men. I don't think you guys will take the fly swatters. You'd ask one of us to take care of the situation. Same thing as when the barbarian shows up. All that LBGTA, all that black and white, all that, all of that shit will go right out the window. Just like in Afghanistan. It don't matter anymore because I got the ax. Now, here's what's happening. The more we give the power to the politicians, your owners, the more likely they will just let the barbarian come right through the door. More likely they done dealing with the barbarian. They already know who the barbarian is. They already made a deal with the barbarian. Most likely your politician works for the barbarian. But all he has to do is see some Al Green for your ass. All he has to do is come out with some ice cream. Oh, look at him. What a wonderful guy. We'll vote him in. There was a presidential candidate. I'm not getting political here, but his ass literally did zero campaigning. And he was the most popular president ever voted in. Now, I call bullshit on that, but I also say 60% of women are the primary, the, are the primary voters. So somebody gonna have to take this L. If you don't wanna take the L, ladies, it's fine. You gonna take an L. I don't know what L you like, me saying it, or this guy swinging the ax. Which one you want? You taking one, choose one. And here's the situation here. On the horizon, we have eternal compliance to government and corporations. We have now pledged allegiance to them. They own us. Men no longer lead. This is a great situation. Men no longer lead. I can no longer lead my household. I can't even marry a woman today and lead it. She would be discouraged from allowing me to lead or she would have to give me permission to lead until she no longer wants to give me the permission to lead. Then I have to report to the government. I don't want that scenario. I don't want to talk to the government. Just put the traffic lights up, put the damn crosswalk out there and leave me alone. So I choose to not deal with women when it's from relationship to the government. I'm not the only one that does that. A lot of men are finding that out. They're going, damn, that's true. And they can be men. Now I can come out here and talk my shit because I don't worry about anybody else. No one leads me, I lead myself. And more men are finding that out. It's better to have that than to have the opposite. I also don't work for a corporation. I have no owner. So I can do what other men can. I can say what other men can. You guys have corporations and government and, and shopping to do. So you have to comply. Or tomorrow you're going to need a man. Very fast. Tomorrow you're going to need a man. 
Um, last point on this, and we'll open it up for questions. The only way out of this scenario, ladies, I have five ways out. So there are solutions to this. So I'm going to give you the solution. I just don't want to come in here and say it's all messed up. There are solutions and there are five ways to avoid this. Are you ready? <laughs> Number one, World War Three, which we're kind of in World War Three now. This is a chemical war. You just don't know it yet. It'll be all discovered 40 years down the line when nobody cares. But this is a war. But let's just say it was a physical war. World War Three will solve the bullshit. You would have to either strap up and go to the front line, have some skills to survive. If they came to our turf and started World War Three or find a man and submit or allow him to lead or whatever, because if you don't, you're dead. But I think World War Three will cut the B.S. It will cut the B.S. between the blacks and the whites, the lesbians and the straights and all of these other people. We will no longer have that problem because people would have to get back in line. The next way we get out of it is called an economic collapse of epic proportion. An uh, economic collapse of epic proportion. Do you know what would happen to your job tomorrow? Your little paper and pencil pushing job that everybody's like, oh, we need to get equal pay for that. It would be gone. Gone. During the COVID virus thing, they're going to have to censor this for the YouTube. During that time, 70% of those that lost their job were what gender? Women. Of those that lost their job, 70% of them were women. And that was a little economic bubble. Imagine if the whole damn economy collapsed and all those corporations that you tattooed your logo, their logo on your ass, they're like, uh, sorry, hon, we don't have no job. Where's the strong and independent gone? It's gone immediately. Okay, we've seen that before. An economic collapse of in proportion will change everything. And it would what? Force you, oh, well, I better go find a husband. He got a job. It will change it overnight. The next thing that will change it is what I call um, a plague, a plague. And I predicted all of this. I was talking about this before COVID-19. So you can go back to my catalog and all of these things I talked about. A plague. And I said this when November 2019, I recorded it. I said, if we had a plague and I said, we're due to, I swear to God, I said this. I said, we're due for a plague. <laughs> November 2019, I posted it all on the internet. I was like, I said it, here it is. I said, if there was a plague, all of the BS would be gone. I mean, all of this stuff that we're dealing with, these social, it'd be gone, a plague. The next thing is a religious awakening. If all of a sudden the clouds parted and Christ himself came down on a white horse, it's all gone. Everybody would go fall in line with whatever that is. Or the religious awakening is Islam. If all of a sudden everybody turned to Islam and said, this is it, this is what we've been searching for, it would be over. Or the Taliban came in and forced it on you. It would be gone. There would be no need to have any of these things, okay? And the last one is, oh, immigration. Massive immigration. Massive immigration. Are we experiencing that? Are the powers that be allowing that? Why? Why do you think they're allowing that? There's a lot of reasons, but they want the vote. Want the vote. What else? Cheap labor. Cheap labor. What else? It's kind of slavery, cheap labor. Is there any other reason related to, related to what I talked about? They procreate. They have babies. White people ain't having no babies. Black people ain't having no babies. Most people have one baby, maybe two immigrants. Five, 10, 15, 20. That's future voters. That's future more people depending on them. There's more people now they can erase your ass. Black people are gonna be done. I'm just telling you, black people don't have a chance in hell now. The more immigrants they bring in, they're just wiping out the black uh, community. Okay, because they no longer need that vote. And then the whites are next. You guys are next. Because you don't procreate. Y'all barely got one kid, 2.2 kids. You know what immigrants are doing? They get married, Niger and I'm not just talking about southern border immigrants. I'm talking about everybody's ass. They come over. They have, they have anger babies. 
Anchor, anchor babies, Nigerians come over, they stay in traditional families and they procreate and they support and provide in the man leads. Hispanics, Latinos, they do the same thing. They're, they have the father lead, the mother does some work. Sometimes she does, sometimes she don't. They do backbreaking work, cheap labor, and they procreate. These are all future voters. That's the future of our country right there. Now, whites and blacks, y'all gonna be looking at this shit because y'all fell for all the marketing campaigns, strong and independent. Y'all fell for all the bullshit. And it led you to a point where you're useless to the powers that be. Your owner, you're useless to them. You're just somebody that they can just patch along until they get what they want. So the barbarian comes in, okay? So those are some reasons that I'm looking at it. I'm not 100% accurate on it, but I'm looking at this going, huh, this looks like we're going to be on the short end of the stick either way unless you literally put men in the position and said unleash the beast start protesting against these people stand up to them stand your ground don't call for the bullshit if you're a woman in your household and the man says look we're gonna stockpile some weapons today in case the government come up in this month we're gonna start capping and shooting hey uh, learn how to shoot this beast don't let our kids get uh, eject, injected with all this bullshit. Do not let them wear a face condom and a sock all through their high school. Revolt, not revolt, but stand up, stand your ground and have the men lead up front. These young women are running around these college campuses. I guarantee you they wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight right now. They ain't gonna do nothing and I know you're not gonna do nothing. So there's never a point where I say that woman leads me. They could put her up as the president of the United States. And I know she ain't leading me. Because when it came down to it, she can't. She's incapable unless, unless she has simp enforcers, indoctrinated men. That is the only chance they have. Simp enforcers. And there are plenty of them. <laughs> All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Protect the, uh, remove the protector. You can find me here on YouTube. Massive following there. The Return of Masculinity. I literally put that out 2018. I wrote two books right here. Uh, the Evolution and Free Agent Lifestyle. Free Agent Lifestyle is a men's guide for peace, quiet, and freedom. It tells you to get ready for the woman that you need to select. It doesn't tell you to leave women. It says to get ready for the woman that you want to select. Men, I'm trying to get men in a better position for you. That's what I'm trying to get. I'm tired of these simps. I'm tired of weak men. I'm tired of, I'm tired of betas. It makes no sense. Uh, the evolution is the feminism's reverse engineering of American women. You can pick all of these up on Amazon, Audible Books, anywhere you want. Um, there's also uh, platforms. Let's see, what else? Oh, Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast. That is free on Spotify, Anchor, Google Play, and all this stuff. I'm a hardworking man. I'm what women actually ask for until they get it. <laughs> they get that shit and they be like, damn. I'd be like, yeah, this is how it's gonna run. Or I will replace your ass. Most men can't say that, huh? Most men be like, please don't. I'll sleep on the couch. What can I do to make you happy? You can't never make no woman happy. You can't make anybody happy. That's, it's a fact. The person has to be happy. She gotta be happy with herself. So it's not my duty to make you happy. My duty is to what? We clarified it earlier, right? Did anybody say make a wife happy? They didn't. They said, protect, secure, provide. That's my job. Okay. Uh, this is my website. Co uh, it's not coachgregadams.com. It is actually gregadams1.com. Uh, and thank you very much. Any questions, you can come up to the microphone. If you have questions, we got about five minutes. Uh, if you agree or disagree, it's totally fine with me. I won't lose any sleep. All right. I won't be mad or offended. I won't go home. Damn, that one woman. She disagreed with me. I never lose sleep over it. I got people, probably 5,000 people per day watch me live. They watch me live talking this ish. And there's people in the comment section talking. I never lose sleep. I just go right back to sleep. All right, after I'm done, I go click. I close the computer. I'll be like. Hur. All right, so if you disagree or agree, let me know. Yes. Thank you very much. Hold that mic closer. It's, her mic's not on. Well, they want to hear you on the, on the uh, camera. Check, 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 check. 
sounds like it's on. Check, check. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? <laughs> thank you. One thing. Uh, Hold that th closer. Thank you. One thing um, of several that you said uh, was not the master of the house. Is not the master of the house. Is that another? No, 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 no. I did come in late, but I don't believe that you said anything about the master of the house. Mm. The master of the house is just the leader of the household, yeah. right? Right. It's being misinterpreted now okay. that the master bedroom, for example, yeah. is no longer the master. It's the main the main bedroom. or the primary I've or the primary as well sir yes sure. yes, yes 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 her husband is a real estate broker mm -hmm. and uh, visiting and he said to me that he had to say to his agents no longer the master bedroom correct isn't that interesting and there's two reasons why it's a masculine issue and it's also a racial issue some people well, have attributed that to saying it was what they call the master quarters or master. Of I, I don't know if there's proof right. in that, but eh. controlling the yeah. language is something that they do to make you weaker. Okay, they handicap yes, you. Absolutely. Another is that uh, a barbarian has no feelings of love. A barbarian has feelings of hate, yes. aggression, and that's true. They do, and they won't negotiate. That is the big thing about the barbarian. They're not hearing anything mm. that you want to hear. It's hate and aggression. Yes. Finally, in your last five statements, that scares me. It scares me because we have not even reached a quarter of a century yet. Right. World War Three, and you know what? It's cultural war right. that we are having now. Mm -hmm. The immigration, the different cultures coming in mm -hmm. freely. Freely, yes. And the generations of people, of the generational differences. You know, baby boomers and Generation X. I'm a boomer. Yeah, we're raised differently than millennials oh, and Gen Z. Yeah, and I just wanna yeah. let you know, the primary yeah. working population in the next five years will be baby boomers and Gen Z. Not, I'm sorry, no. Gen Z and millennials. Millennials, no Gen boomers. Gen Z and millennial. Boomers will almost be retired, all. And Gen X, which I'm a part of, will be at the tail end preparing for retirement. You're, you're talking about in the 70s? Were you born in the 70s? I was born in the 70s, yes. 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 Thank you for your input. Well, you're absolutely, um, you know, it's my blessing to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I was, I'm wondering, well, let's say you've entered marriage and you've baited your male, mm -hmm. you have enlightenment and you want to make him alpha. Mm. What do you suggest the wife do to help him grow in that role? Get a new husband. <laughs> listen i've talked to men about this i've talked to men about this and this comes up because they're like okay i i let off with weakness now i want to be strong it's almost mission impossible unless you i mean you really got to turn the corner all right you really got to turn the corner it's almost mission impossible he's going to it's kind of like a the teacher i'm a nice teacher hi everybody you know you can do whatever sit wherever you want Talk to your classmates, do whatever you want. All right, two months in, it's chaos and anarchy. So they come in, damn it, I'm gonna put my foot down. Now I'm gonna put a seating chart, nobody say nothing, nobody chew no bubble gum, what's gonna happen? The kids are gonna be like, nah, man. Nah, I thought you were cool. Dr. Smith, man, I thought you were cool. It's over. He's lost control, and I know that as a coach. The first few weeks, I'm, I'm hard on them, then I can, lower it i can always turn the volume down and then bring it back up oh shit i remember that guy but i can never leave with the volume low and then turn it up to full blast and expect people to be comfortable with it so you know uh if you love your husband and you want to see him in that role maybe you need to bring another man in the relationship i don't know or maybe i don't know i'm just joking <laughs> i'm just joking but 
it's almost going to be difficult for him to do that, especially if he's been in it for so many years. Sometimes you just got to, you know, if, if your if family's importance, you got to deal with the weakness. Jelly back, spineless, yellow back. Yes, dear. I, I forgot about that one. I'll just say yes, dear, and it'll be okay. I'll be like, hell no. I'm standing on my ground, so that's all I would suggest. All right, anyone? I got one more question. Okay, yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Roya. Hi. I don't know, is it working? Yes, it's yes. working now. Um, there were things I completely agree with. I wanna acknowledge that the sayings of the um, happy life, happy wife, and all those things, in my opinion, were in the third phase of the female revolution. Mm -hmm. The first being the era of suppression, the second being the era of independence. I do believe that we sang, swung the pendulum so far that we have forgotten the gifts of the other side. Sure. And it's time to centralize a little bit um, where women still have a voice and men also have a voice. We've sure. masculated our women and emasculate our men. What I have a challenge with is that you're talking a lot about women needing men, but men also need women. We need each other and we need to be able to lean in to secure masculine. And what I'm feeling here is masculine with bravado. And when you have bravado, then that's creating submission in a woman. And submission in a woman is against her will. When she decides to release and give you control, it's because you have had the compassion to fully see her. And when you do it just from strong arming, neither one of us are going to get the true benefits and the gifts of each other. And so when you, when you talk about our leadership in the workforce, I completely agree that we have to be able to maintain some kind of semblance of balance. But the insults of the capacity and the capabilities of women in the workforce was extreme. And just if you go on Google alone with, with CEOs, I know you can't go to Google, period, for, but you were touting a lot of statistics. Mm -hmm. And if you go to CEOs, one after the other, companies with female exec executives make more money, firms with female CEOs make better stock price performances, women in the workforce are proven to increase business profitability, women are better at bringing people together. So there are gifts. And yes, a female president would need men and a male president would need women. So let's keep that together. Thank you for your thoughts. Mm. I want to now address a couple of things. Yes. You had a lot there. Um, I think you were talking about the bravado in my message. One of the things that, um, that I also addressed is the barbarian doesn't negotiate. And there's going to be a point when men get tired, right? And so at some point, you won't be able to negotiate how we bring this central message together. I also talked about Afghanistan and the Taliban. At some point when it's pushed this far, the only reaction you're going to get is this. And this is your only choice. And when this choice happens, you can't negotiate. So what I would say is, what I would say is, you may not like this bravado, but you can't control this bravado. You would be better off controlling the story with the women instead of trying to tape tamp me down, because that's just more of what's causing the problem. I'm not trying to tamp you down. I want to add a voice to the message to these women yes. in this moment. Keep the mic close. It wasn't working. Um, I just, I'm not trying to tamp you down. You yeah. do whatever you're going to do. I want to just add a voice in the moment to the women who may need to also hear a little bit of a centralized message in what I believe it comes from a, solid place for you in an extreme positioning, in my opinion. Thank you very much for your thoughts. And now we'll have a kumbaya session and we'll all get together in harmony. I'm not trying to demean you, but what I'm saying is this. What I'm trying to say, come, come on, sit down. When men protect, we never kumbaya. We never make it feel good. What is there? There's a hierarchy. There's somebody that says, I'm gonna lead, you're gonna be here, you're gonna be frontline, and ex this is how men lead. Now we do have this sense of trying to appeal to feelings, but by the time, and most leaders know, by the time I get everyone on one accord, we're already blown up. You're talking about a battle, you're not talking This is a battle, this is a cultural battle, we're in a battle. You're in a battle. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. 
We also need the feminine. Okay, that's where you get together with these ladies. This is where you lead them. You're not going to get men. You have police in here. You have police forces out here. If you have time to kumbaya before the shooter gets at your ass, you're done. We don't have time for that. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you this, okay? I've been on this planet 40 something years. I've seen it escalate to the point where the only thing it's gonna do is rebound back. I promise you, there's not going to be a feeling session about this and it turn out in everyone's favor. You won't have time. You won't have time. And I understand this is a, you know, cause you're a working woman. You have your pride in your career. You've mentioned your career statistics or the statistics of women and CEOs. Hold on for a second. You never mentioned mother. You, that was, that, you never, hold on for a second. That wasn't the subject of what I came to talk to you about. Okay, but listen, you, you, listen, listen, you're, you're, you're doing what most women do and they lead with their owner stuff. This is what you led with. Now you're trying to me your mother and your nurturing. Because that's what you beat down. You insulted over and over again the capacity of female in the workforce. Ending us at your Walmart owner. at the end of our job life. I'm sorry, what? Ending us women at Walmart at the end of our job life. That's what the statistics tell us. Have you been to Walmart? It that's what the not. statistics tell us. And the only reason why you're telling me that female CEOs make more money? No, they make the prof higher profit for their company. That's what I was talking about. Higher results for their company, higher profits for their company, higher profits. So they sell more stuff. For their stock sales for their company. Because they understand women, right? They, look, CEO, wait, 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 hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. No, 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 stop, don't change, stop. Stop. Don't change the subject. Just relax for a second. You're telling me that corporate women who work for their owners understand women and their purchasing power and make more money. Is that what you're telling me? That's exactly what I said. Absolutely, that's exactly what I said. And you understand that, but you're a rebel. But I guarantee you if a bee came in here, you'd be behind my back. Actually, that's not true. Yes, it is. I know you're scared of bees, butterflies, mosquitoes. You would not, you would be waiting to see, it'd be a fly. It'd be a fly in here and you'll be behind me. Hey, sir, I like that bravado you have. I know you. I know exactly who you are. I would get behind you in a war. Of course you would have to. We're talking about war. We're talking about relationship. No, no, no. We're talking about the society. Do you do you think we're in harmony right now, or would you say we're in times of discomfort? No, we're not in harmony, and that's the challenge. But I don't want to continue to swing the pendulum so extreme in a different direction. I'm talking about centralizing. Okay. Did you centralize the message about happy wife, happy life? Are you happy with that? Did you disagree with that? No, I didn't disagree with that. I agree with that. You agree with happy wife, happy no, life? I, I agree that that's a bad thing. Okay. You didn't. Did you tell me that earlier? You did say you agreed with some things. Okay. So there's some things you will disagree with and that's totally fine. Now, I'll remind you, you're getting the nicest version of this. I promise you. Because if it ever goes further than this, this is your other alternative. And we're very close to this. I'm not trying to say we could have this, but we're getting closer to this. Now you can negotiate with me and I'm not gonna give you a lot of ground. I will meet you about 2%, but this guy right here will meet you none. What would you prefer? I'm gonna ask you. I know we don't see the eye, but what would you prefer? I'm actually giving you an opportunity to have your voice. The Taliban want. I understand the question. When it goes far enough, this is your choice. There's no negotiation. You have a voice now, but you didn't like the voice too much. The next voice you hear. Are you talking about an evolution of society? That's where, that's where we're, that's we're yes, what yes, yes, yes. You, you won't be, work. yes, so what would you prefer? Why are you giving me only that choice? Because what's the other choice? What, what's the other choice? The other choice is that male and female come together. Since to when? Since when has that been? It's never, and that's the, that's okay. the that's what you go to. That's what you involve, not only regrets. You're talking about regression. You're talking about involvement. So you're talking about a fantasy. You just admitted it's never been this way. It never will be. 
There's no Why utopia. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. You're talking about Snuffleupagus and Big Bird, imaginary scenarios that has never happened. I'm talking about reality and we can feel it right now. There was a time where men overly dominated women and we course corrected. And there needed to be a course correction. Men were overly dominant of women and there needed to be a course correction. But are we overcorrected now? We overcorrected and and we're going to come back and it's going to bite you in the rear end, this overcorrection. Yes. But I just want to say that I think Anthony Johnson's mission in all of his conferences is to get where Roy is talking about, where we're complementary and working together and we're in harmony and we're not trying to dominate you know, but we're trying to allow men to lead and be respected and loved by their wives and, and vice versa, you know, so you make it sound like it could never happen, it's a fantasy, but I'm here for a second year in a row because I believe in this dream. So and as dream. imperfect as this event is, as much raw emotion comes off that stage, I'm trying to learn from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. And, yes. and, and you're... You know, you have some very good points, but I know you've decided to, to be a relationship forever mm. and never go back into the love and marriage scenario. And I respect your decision, you know, but many people here want to, even if we failed in the past, achieve that. They want to. Yeah. I, I believe men want traditionalism a little bit more than you would believe. Yeah. I believe men want traditional. They miss it. They may have seen their mother be it. They may have seen it. Was it perfect? No, obviously not, because we went far against it. And we went so far against it with the campaigns that we're constantly hearing that I can't imagine it coming back in the scenario of harmony and peace. Because anytime there's a reverse, there's going to be a period where it's uncomfortable. Somebody's going to feel we t you took something from me. Men feel that women took something from them. And now you're seeing the correction. Have you heard of MGTOW? Yes. Have you heard of Red Pill? Yeah. Have you heard of these things? This is the uncomfortable time in between where you want to get. There would be no Anthony Johnson if men, because I'm not the only one. The primary, overly, the primarily amount of men are overwhelmingly going we want to correct this. And I can promise you, they're not choosing harmony first. They're choosing to leave you. They're choosing to stay away. They're dropping out of college because college has said you're rapist and male privilege, et cetera. They want nothing to do with it. They're dropping out of the workforce. Have you risk. noticed that? They're at, risk there. they're at risk at work. Me Too movement. They're like, hell with that. It's dangerous for you. They're dropping out of the police force. They're dropping out of, there is a dropping out of men. In China, they call it the lying down phenomenon. And they want that, right? Because they're the barbarians. Well, China wants the men to become more masculine. They're actually taking off images of emasculated men. For so, their people. For their people. For yeah, people. for us. They want us with right. male males everywhere. Yeah. And so men are going, what do we have here? I'm not giving much options. And so we do want harmony and, and peace. I would love it. I know we've never been in harmony and peace. We've been in comfort provided by, but there is gonna be a swing back, a pendulum swing back coming in that you won't control. And you could come out there and be like, uh, harmony, peace. That would be like, let me just say this. That would be like, Slavery. I'll use it as that. You're going into slavery. Just take that as a concept because we all understand it as we were told it would to be. And we're going to wrap it up here. If the slave owners freed the slaves and the slaves were pissed and the owner said, hey, forget about all that other shit that we did. That would be the most harmonious situation, wouldn't it? Like you're enslaving people and then when it's time to free them, hey, forget about that 300, 400 years of that stuff. Why don't we just live in harmony? What do you think the other people will do? They would be like, hell no, we're not forgetting that. Fortunately for America, 
That's what black people did. They said, you know what? We can live in peace and harmony. Just let us live over here. All right. And we'll be good. Right. Now, what happened? What happened? Nothing changed. Eventually, every year. Seems like black people were taken advantage of because black people said we ain't going to beat your asses up. We could have, but we'll just stay over here. And guess what happened? 150 years, 200 years later, nothing changed. Everybody's standing there's still a problem. Now, if black people tore their asses up, then it would have swung the other way. But as you can see, they tried to go with peace and harmony. All right, you were fine. We're not going to make you pay for that. And then guess what? Jim Crow, the rebuilding of the South, Civil Rights Acts, Black Lives Matter. We're still trying to tackle the same problem that they think could have tackled a long time ago by either being fair or there being a revolt. Let me just build on this and I'll end on this. This country is here because of a revolution and it was a bloodbath and the minority beat the majority and they got what they want. If they would have said to King George, hey King, stop taxing us, which they did. Hey King, stop doing this, stop doing that, kumbaya. Guess what King George said, stick it up your ass. All right, nothing changed. If you think we're ever gonna do this kumbaya, I guarantee you, you're wasting your time. There needs to be some sort of revolution. There needs to be a swing back. And when it swings back, you gotta take what comes with it. You can't control, hold on for a second. See what she tried to do, of course she said her piece and left. She tried to silence me, she didn't like it. She tried to shame me, she tried to control my language. You see that? She's exactly what she did. We can do this, and Kamala can do, okay. When the barbarians start swinging, I'm gonna just sit back off to the side and say, hey, kumbaya your ass, you know, if you want. It ain't gonna change up. All right, I, I'm sorry, it is the way it is. You can run back to your husband and, and, and love him, but that's not what's happening in our country. They're not doing that. You got strong and independent, you got girls selling themselves on the internet openly for free. Not for free, but they've got free accounts. And they're selling their bodies, age 18 to 28, to men, rich men, or men with enough money to buy them. Okay, this is our culture today. And young men no longer have to pursue women. I'll just buy you. And then send you home, and I got what I want, she got what we want, and here we are. If that's gonna be the revolution, that's where it is. It doesn't have to be violent, but that's where the revolution will be, okay? All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, we got one more question, one more question, sorry, yes. Okay. <laughs> I broke my foot. Um, October the 1st, 1971, I married my now present husband. He has always been the leader of our household. And while you were talking, I'm going, yes, amen, that's right. And it is what you said is right. And ladies, a lot of times we forget. My grandma used to say, the hand that rocks the cradle World. That means you stay home with your children and you raise them. And blessed is the woman who will recycle and reuse and can and freeze in order to make her house. You can make more money yes. by doing things like that. Learn to sew. I made my sons, I have a picture of my two sons, age five and three, in lovely suits for Easter. And it is one of my precious pictures. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you. We can win this war. We can win this war? Okay, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but it also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again. Full women always great. great. Women great. Make women great again. But they're going to do a three-day seminar for women 
led by all men. <laughs> In mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman? But women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, Not my yes, words. We do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. In Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza and say no to the toxic bullying feminist dogma. <laughs> Taught by men to make women great again. Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the manosphere. It's run by all men, which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing... It's 2021. Welcome to the new 21 Report. I'm Tony Bruno, and today I have with me Coach Greg Adams. Coach, how you doing? What's going on, Tony? Good to be here with yeah, you, brother. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. First thing I want to ask you is, how has your experience been at 21 so far? It's been great. You know, a, a new group of men, some men that uh, I've seen before, and new speakers, so it's been great. I, I did three speeches, mm -hmm. and I talked to three different audiences about three different things, so it's been good so far. Okay. Who benefits from your we'll say your patriarch speech first i would say the fathers because what i talked about is the protector you know the removing of the protector to allow other things to to come into and influence your family your friendships and your children so fathers would benefit the most and men who are looking to be fathers and what they can anticipate by having kids and going into society so uh, when they see that one when you see that one at home and when you uh, got a chance to see that in the audience it put the value back into the man, into the relationship. Instead of making him just a provider, mm -hmm. we put the protection in the secure and actually not allowing outside influences with your children and your family. Okay, so yeah. Patriarch, what about the 21 convention? 21 convention was more geared to men looking to put more value in what society, I would say, is entitling themselves to. Your money, energy, attention, and your time. And so people basically are entitled to this. They feel entitled to this. And men feel entitled to exchange their most important resources for very little in return. And men that don't know how to manage that and negotiate with that, they are gonna find themselves having trouble in the marketplace, less opportunities. They'll have a scarcity mindset. And I'm trying to show men that you have true value out here. You have measurable, tangible value you have a commitment that benefits more people other than yourself, so you gotta treat it like that. Okay, and the 22 convention for women. The 22 convention was great. I got a great response from the 22 convention uh, for the women. Only one and a half people were a, a little upset, but for them, it was the valuing of the protector. Understanding how we silence the protectors, but we still want them to provide, protect, and serve. How we put roles that are silent in addition to their protector roles and why it's not beneficial to have the male not be the leader and the protector. So we, the audience was well received on the women's side, but you know, there's always gonna be a couple fellows ruffled. I wanna dive a little deeper into that. Why yeah. do you think women take this advice as a man talking to a woman? Why do they take it, we'll say, a little harder than a man would? Well, because they want to 
they want to make men versions of themselves, of, of women, when they need him to be that. But then when there's an emergency, they want him to be masculine. Mm -hmm. They want him to sacrifice himself. And so as we're negotiating this power struggle between the dynamics of the genders, while we're negotiating this, they want to control the narrative and make the man, well, if you say it like this, and if you were less, had less bravado, maybe I would listen to you. But since you have it, then we're just going to disregard everything you say. So that's the emotional side of women. And I encourage the emotional side of women. But be there for yourselves with that. If you want men to be consumed with that, then they can't be the protector that you need them to be. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one thing you said that was power struggle that kind of stuck out to me. Right. Explain that a little more. Well, the power struggle is basically, you know, women want, they want their voice to be heard, which they should be heard. They want a better place than they've had in the past in society, which there should be. Uh, there's a lot of women that believe that there should be more, they should have more. And, uh, but with that more, they're taking away from men in the progress. And this is what they may not be aware of or what they may not care. So as they're taken away from men, men are becoming, you know, they're not become, they're discontent about the situation. And so there's a power struggle between what's, what's fair and uh, what's fair to men. And so we're trying to negotiate that right now. We're trying to negotiate it with dating and romance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, men are supposed to be traditional. Men are supposed to pay for dates and they're supposed to assert and they're supposed to uh, be the ones to approach. But we're also saying women should be the one to be able to lead. Mm -hmm. They should be able to have the jobs and be managers. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you negotiate that in a romantic setting? And then how do you negotiate that romantic setting in a professional setting? So there's a power dynamic that we're trying to figure out. And unfortunately, we are born in a time where we're trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I look at it and say, maybe we figure this out in the future, or maybe it destroys itself in the future. Right now we're on the path to destruction. Or, you know, maybe it reverts back to traditionalism, which I don't believe is gonna happen, but we'll see. Okay, now you were on three stages. Yep. Let's start with patriarch. Yep. What did you learn? What did Coach Greg Adams get out of speaking? Well, you know what's funny? I think, you know, when I'm speaking, men tend to not give you a feedback. You know, they don't give you the feedback. And so as you're talking to them, you're like, I don't know if this is resonating. On the women's side, they, they will give you some feedback as you're talking to them and they will interact. They're not afraid to interact with you. So you got more feedback. But what I learned is after I got off the stage, people were appreciative of the message. They said, hey, you know what? We needed this and we need men like you to continue to speak. So um, men, men are trying to find a way to show their appreciation for you. And it may not be vocal, but they're absorbing the message. And uh, that, that's what I love about it. That's what I love about that. And so what did you learn from speaking to the women next? I learned that, and mo most people have to understand, there's a silent minor uh, majority of women who really want men to be protectors, providers, secures. Mm -hmm. They want them to be alpha. They want them to be the leaders. And unfortunately, their voices aren't being heard. And they're getting caught up in the, the process of the loud minority pushing the agenda forward. And so we got a great appreciation for women that really want relationships. They came here to learn. And some of them are getting beat up in the middle of learning this. And some of them are getting the message that they need. So after the, I got done with the speech, there were a lot of women that were very, um, very receptive of the message. So I appreciated that. Okay. And then the 21 convention. Man, the 21 was a little bit more energetic. Okay. You know, I was giving them a different message than I gave to the previous crowd. And there are some guys struggling with their value. So what I learned is, you know, that they won't ask questions out in the open for fear that people will judge them. And men are always judged. So... They won't ask questions, but in, in private, after I got done with the speech, they also had a lot of questions for me at the end. Yeah. Okay. Also, Coach Greg is an author. Yes, sir. Let's got, talk about your books. This book right here. Let's start with that. Got the Free Agent Lifestyle, which this is the cheat code. This is the cheat code for men uh, going forward and giving them a strategy. There's different strategies that you can use in dating, romance, life. And I think this encompasses just not dating, marriage, romance. It, it encompasses life. 
And it basically puts you on a path of self-discovery before you can offer anything of value to women. This isn't a book to segregate yourself from women. This mm -hmm. isn't a book that says, forget women for life and live this lifestyle. This is a lifestyle that you have the resources to benefit from, have more fun. And then once you do it, people, not just women, people will see value in you. And then you can determine what your, your contract is as a free agent. Mm -hmm. You can increase your value and then you're basically gonna deal with less low value people and win at life. Okay, and you have other books. I have other books, yeah. The Evolution is a book about feminism. It's my okay. interpretation of radical feminism, how it has now infected the culture with the lower, lower marriage rates, the higher divorce rates, the declining birth rates. It's basically gonna talk about if we continue this path, where we're gonna go. And uh, probably not gonna go anywhere successful mm -hmm. as a country, it's going to lead into more socialism. I don't get too much into the socialism or communism idea, but um, the, the, uh, the things that they promote, the marketing strategy that they're promoting is socialist communist based. Mm -hmm. And so if we are going to continue this and we don't have men step up, this is where we're going to end. Okay. Now you live the free agent lifestyle. Yeah. Correct. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I got to live it. Yeah. Yep. And to me, a speaker, and a person like yourself, I think con congruency with your message is so important. How important is that to you? Well, people are going to look at you and say, well, you know, he got married to a lower value woman or I see him mm -hmm. with lower value women. I see him messing around and, and hanging out at bars and picking up women. Well, then they're going to look at it and say, didn't you say? And people are going to hold you accountable to your message. So uh, there's different stages of this. There's stages where you have to go off to yourself and not date, um, and that's good. That's gonna be great for you. But then, again, this book is inclusive of people who do wanna date at some point, even almost to the point where you do wanna marry, although I do caution you in these stages of that decision-making. So, you know, you might see me with a girl at some particular point. Mm -hmm. You might see me with a bimbo or mm -hmm. something like that. But at the same time, doesn't mean I'm not living that lifestyle. This book is inclusive of that and it never says you're not supposed to do that. Okay. What I want you to do now is talk to the women out there. Give them a message from Coach Greg. Yeah, I, ladies, what I would tell you is, first of all, I love you. Because <laughs> most of the time, they think this message is to separate or to not like them. I love women. I love the value that they bring to men as long as it's a tangible, equal, measurable value. But what I would say is, uh, if you're a, in the silent majority, as I call you, be a little more vocal. We hear enough from the blue-haired, overweight women of the world. We can hear less from them and more from you. I know, although, you know, what I always tell women is that you get penalized from feminism probably is harder than we do. They tell you don't make these choices in your life, and then they push you into careers, which you didn't want. You wanted to get married and settle down and have family. So they get penalized. You get penalized for being conservative. You get penalized for being in shape. You get penalized for, you know, towing the line of the social construct. So, yeah, you don't get to be on Cosmopolitan magazine if you're under 150 pounds. So what I would say is don't let them bully you. Be a little bit like myself and throw it back into their face and challenge them on the things that you know to be true these ideas and constructs that you know are false are costing you families, opportunities, and they're costing you relationships with good men because the toxic women, the loud min minority, are affecting the entire culture. Okay. And let's do a quick message to men of all ages. Yeah. Men of all ages, know your value. Know your value. Money, energy, attention, and time and your commitment. Know the value of your commitment. Your, the value of your commitment is more important or just as important as hers. The reality of you taking yourself off the marketplace to focus on one woman is not what you're naturally designed to do. So it, it, it holds value and understand that value and not be so impatient to give it away for someone who doesn't deserve it. Now, Coach Greg, we appreciate you coming here to 21. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big deal. I'll be um, back again, man. Yes, I'll be you, back again. Yes, you yeah, will, man. and we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, how can everybody find you? Find me on everywhere. YouTube, Coach Greg Adams is the channel. I have seven channels on there, so uh, you shouldn't have a problem finding me there. Find me on Instagram if they don't delete me. Coach Greg Adams TV. Um, 
I was on TikTok at one point, but anywhere, Coach Greg Adams, you can find me. Just... Excellent. Coach, thank you, we man. appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, Tony. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.